All right. So here we got the rims and the tires properly laid out. I also have the glue, your tip, exacto blade with a brand new blade. And uh, you're probably wondering why we're using the blade. Well, it's going to be shown here shortly. All right. So first thing that I normally do with all tires is basically clean them. All right. Because if you notice, we have um, we have this white powdery substance uh, basically on each tire, right? And um, we're not really too concerned with the outer sides, right? Or powdery substance on the actual tire itself. We're mainly concerned about the lip area. But we are not just going to go there and sit down and clean just the lip. We're just going to go ahead and wash the whole tire. So doing that, we will remove the inserts for each tire, completely remove them, set them aside, and then we are going to wash the tire. Um, I normally use Simple Green uh, to wash the tires. Um, try not to use uh, harsh chemicals because uh, you don't want to deteriorate the uh, rubber itself. Um, you can use alcohol. Um, sometimes I, I use the wax and grease remover, but you know, that right there too is, uh, uh, you don't want to have any chance of it softening the rubber and then making it brittle in the future. All right. Um, uh, so simple, simple green or even, uh, Dawn dishwashing liquid soap is fine. All right. So that's what we're going to do. Um, going to go ahead and do that uh, off camera real quick. Um, other than that, that's what I'm going to start with. Get this all cleaned up. We'll come back, get it all dried up and everything. And then we'll start um, getting everything all glued up here. All right. So be right back. got the tires all cleaned up went ahead and I used uh, simple green all right um, so simple green will remove the uh, those white letterings and stuff if it was uh, basically drenched and let sit uh, eventually uh, the simple green will take some of that off but uh, if you're just doing a quick cleaning spray the simple green and then just rub it down and then rinse it off really good with uh, lukewarm water or hot water, uh, it works fine. All right, so basically from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and dry, uh, dry the tires out basically, uh, get all that water and everything out of there and just, just to get it all nice and clean and dry. All right, that's simple as that. Uh, oops. So as you can see the tire, it doesn't have, doesn't have the uh, white powdery residue especially all up in the uh, the lip area of the tire all right now the reason why I have the razor blade all right is if you actually look inside the tire if you look in the lip if you just go around and do a little inspection you will see uh, some rubber uh, burrs like flashing all right you want to get rid of this flashing all right and it just basically uh, just using a brand new razor blade and just just go around and cut all that flashing off all right uh, the reason for that is because you don't want that flashing to kind of fold over uh, in the groove of the rim and it's basically what's going to happen is you're going to have the excess flashing there and the lip here will not seat properly inside the rim all right, and then that's the reason why if you ever really looked at some of the guys who glued their tires and stuff like that, they just go straight from the packaging straight onto the rim. And sometimes you see, um, you, you won't see the, uh, the actual uh, casing nice and flush mounted on the rim. You'll see a little bump, all right? Now, I went ahead and inspected some of the tires, pretty much all of them. Uh, we do have a little bit of flashing uh, and then we also have 
this right we actually have a, a raised area if you look at that all right you got this little dimple all right and that's in the inside portion of the, the lip of the big tire all right so we got a few flashing areas uh, areas that has flashing and we have we actually have that that piece protruding out all right and if uh, we're just gonna go in there and we're gonna remove that that flashing we're just gonna cut that flashing off and make it nice and straight and smooth uh, if you do not do that that flashing is gonna eventually do the same thing on the bigger rim because that goes that goes in there and it's in the inner circumference area or the inner portion of the lip it's not gonna properly seal um, your tire against the rim all right so yes you can you can buy the rims and buy the casings from the hobby store and just basically mount it on straight out of the package that's fine uh, if you're if that's what you really want to do but the proper way to do it is to properly to clean the tire first remove all the flashing and all the bumps uh, excess rubber material within the uh, lip of the actual tire itself so you can get a proper seal around the rim all right so with that said that out of the way I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe the tires down and get it dry just let it sit for a little bit and get all that moisture out of there and then uh, we will put the uh, inserts back on making sure that it's inserted properly and then we'll just massage it around and you know get all that foam to conform to the tire and make sure that we don't have any pinching or you know and stuff like that just make sure the foam in the inside of the tire is properly seated well all right and then we will go ahead and uh, assemble the tire onto the rim and then we'll go into the actual gluing part of it we went ahead and basically dried up the tires uh, went ahead and inserted one um, of the uh, foam into one of the wheels so the next one here I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing now before installing your uh, your foam inserts sometimes the foam insert also has some powder residue um, so when you insert it and it touches the side of the uh, the lip sometimes that powder end up you know tends to transfer to the actual lip of the tire and therefore having some powder there and then when you try to glue it it doesn't uh, adhere properly so uh, in this case your foam inserts look pretty clean fairly new I mean they are new but uh, they're clean they don't actually have any um, powder residue and all that stuff on it but you know so it's fine but should you have powder residue on there and you already have clean your rims uh, your tires just basically fold them up type deal insert it trying to uh, not touch the um, sides and just put it back in to the actual tire and then just massage it in there uh, make sure there's no kinks no bends no um, while you're putting it in there just kind of massage it around into the tire itself uh, worst case scenario you can just rub in here uh, and clean the lip further uh, just to be on the safe side but in this case we're good all right so yeah just making sure double check look inside making sure that there's no kinks in your um, foam inserts and some of them they're not folded and stuff all right so we got that we're gonna go ahead and take care of these guys for this one make sure the uh, uh, foam insert is going to be placed in the right way you know because they got two different circumferences uh, thicknesses one for the thick side for the front and the back side the thinner side you know right? and this is the stuff that I know you guys know but you know just to put it out there all right just gonna go ahead and put it in there same deal just make sure that uh, we got no kinks make sure that the uh, foam insert is actually placed all the way in there all right 
and it's seated properly in your casing. Alright, make sure everything falls in play and everything is relaxed. Alright, so make sure that nothing is fighting you because if it's fighting, that means uh, everything is not seated in here properly. And if you were to put that onto the rim, eventually you're not going to get an even seal around your actual rim itself. Alright, so you can see right in there, you can see that the uh, casing is resting properly in the notched area of the insert, uh, both the rear and also on the front side. Alright, and so uh, once again, double check, make sure there's no kinks, no bends in your uh, foam insert, and you're good to go. Beeping them like that it's because I'm getting a lot of messages from uh, other groups that I'm in uh, the aircraft side, the boss of building side. So that's what it is. Alright, so we got this one also. Doesn't take much. Uh, the explanation is actually longer than the actual doing. Alright, so uh, there you go same thing all right so from there we're gonna go ahead and insert the uh, tire onto the rim all right and same deal making sure that your you know lettering and everything is in the proper direction uh, some people tend to want to hide everything and put it to the rear it's really up to you but I'm gonna put it the way it's supposed to be all right so we're gonna go ahead and insert the uh, casing with the insert and fitting the lip into the groove and making sure we just kind of massage it around so that we can uh, ensure everything is seating properly all right especially the um, foam insert all right so there you go, we got that going on. As you can see, the uh, contact area of the rim and the casing, you see that? All right, so we push that in, eventually it seats properly within its own groove, all right? Make sure that it's not completely folded in and doing that number. Make sure the outer end of the rim is actually following your actual uh, the groove of the casing so I tend to just walk around not walk around but kind of go around and just lightly pull on it just like that make sure the back is the same all right just do this number all right and there you go you got one tire on there then we're going to do the same thing with this next one we're just going to basically put it in kind of stretching it around just like so all right same thing same deal just inserting your casing onto the rim into the grooves all right just massage it in there making sure everything is seated properly all right So technically after all this you can you can actually glue some tires depending on what it is. Uh it'll take more than 20 minutes, 30 minutes max. You know. Uh like I said in the beginning, you can just purchase a tire straight from the shop, go outside, you know, and just install it and glue it down, you know, and it, it'll work. All right, but this is the um, this right here is pretty much the soundproof way uh, of ensuring that your rubber completely seals around the rim when we add the glue and everything. So the potential chances of it uh, uh, separating during play is reduced a little bit more. All right never gonna say it's gonna eliminate it from coming apart because 
you know um, these tires are, are spinning at a high rpm and uh, they tend to balloon um, you know and stuff like that so it you can you can only the glue is gonna hold as much as it can in other words no matter how good of a glue joint you did all right all right so we got that and we're just gonna pull this out to make sure it seats properly in the lip just like that making sure everything is seated properly all right and in most cases chrome plated rims all right uh, sometimes these rims you would have to uh, sand the inside and remove some of that chrome plating uh, because the chrome plating when the CA when the when the tire and the CA glues onto that uh, eventually this the chrome plating can peel off hence really your glue is only glued onto the chrome plating not the actual rim the rim plastic all right so sometimes depending on what brand rim you would have to kind of scuff off the uh, the plating in this case uh, with uh, Proline they actually you can see right in here in the uh, grooves there's this uh, material that they put in there uh, I don't know what kind of material that is really but uh, you're not gluing it onto the chrome you're gluing it onto this like I don't know was that fabric or something I don't know what the, that is but I, all I know is that it's not gluing onto this uh, piece right here, like the, the chrome plated part. All right, so that's pretty cool how they did that. But uh, back in the day, uh, you would have to actually sand the inner portion of your chrome plated rims, otherwise, it will just pop right out. Alright, so doing that. Let's go ahead and fit all this in there. Kind of massaging it around, just making sure that everything fits in the groove. And you can also hear it pop in there. Alright. So we're doing that. We're gonna kind of pull this apart right here. This just making sure everything is around the actual rim itself, just like so. All right, so now that we have the casing cleaned, the insert inserted into the actual casing, and then now the whole assembly put onto the rim now it's time to get your glue all right so in this case we have the thin tire glue by JC concepts all right um, when you're using thin or medium CA the thicker the, the CA the longer working time you have the thin CA the thinner it is the faster it dries the faster it tacks all right so um, with the thin CA our working time is very 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 short uh, with medium you have enough time to you know pull and uh, if, if something doesn't seat right you're, you have time to kind of move it away and then um, re uh, apply some glue with thin CA normally in the minute it wicks in there it's gonna find the channels and it's gonna continue going around so you don't want to use too much all right because if you put thin CA right here and you tilt it the CA will follow the circumference or follow this basically rim and drip off and everything one thing you don't want is excess CA to be rolling off onto the actual casing all right now I normally start in the back just to kind of uh, get into the groove and you know kind of check your test bed right so that you don't mess up the front all right so what I'm gonna do is if you see the inside of the the casing right you got that lip 
you don't want to just apply the glue right there on this edge because all you're doing is really just gluing the side wall of that lip to the side of the uh, the rim you want to actually get down in there and try to get this portion of the lip the bottom side uh, glued so that it can also adhere to the actual portion of the rim the base of the rim all right uh, in a perfect world you know uh, I would use medium CA because you can control it better but the thin CA it's a little bit more difficult to control uh, so we're just gonna have to go with it you know and what I do is I, I kind of pull it back slightly like this and then I just add some CA right in there kind of drop it in there well, first we gotta make sure we got flow as you can see I got no flow whatsoever in the CA alright so with that let's go make sure we got everything clear let's go pull this back out yep that's what it was we got excess CA stuck on there I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on and then we're going to do a little test Make sure that we got some CA coming out. There you go. All right. So, with that said, I get, I, I normally pull it back slightly, kind of drop some CA in there, not too much, because we're we're using thin. All right. We're using thin CA, and thin CA basically it 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 dries quick. All right. It dries quick so you gotta make sure you kind of working fast with this thing there you go so just give it a few seconds here to tack up I mean it's tacked up already and then you can feel it by when you pull back and see how it's not pulling back here that's because it's dry it's, it's cured already there so I'm gonna pull this back again and I'm going to add some thin CA right here and then set it back in and just let it cure again give it a few seconds you're going to see that it's going to be dry really quick as a matter of fact that thin CA like I said thin CA it's going to follow the channel and so you may be gluing up here but if you depending on how much CA you put it's gonna follow the channel and it's gonna start gluing everything else around so all you have to do is just basically walk around you know, not I keep saying walk but just kind of pull and you will see where the glue actually uh, you know followed up to so this one right here see so it's stuck right there but we still got everywhere else to go all right so I'm gonna go ahead and just basically start gluing all the way around just like that Like I said, one thing about thin CA, uh, you really don't have the luxury to uh, uh, really flip the uh, lip open to try to get uh, completely under, all right? Uh, because once you, like I said, once you wick this thin CA into 
the, the actual in between the rim and the casing it's gonna instantly just stick all right so uh, uh, food for thought future note try to get uh, medium CA medium tire glue uh, will work great um, and then we can use the thin CA uh, for sealing the outer um, sidewall of the rim and the um, the lip to each other. All right. Um, you or you can you can still use a medium CA throughout the whole um, adhering of the casing to the rim. All right. Uh, like I said, with medium CA, uh, you have a little longer working time, whereas the thin CA minute you drip CA into the, the crevice it's gonna instantly just glue that rubber to the rim all right so with that said the other thing too is uh, you can put some big oh, you can put some big rubber bands to kind of squeeze this together and what that does is it kind of brings the casing tighter to the actual rim and like that or you can use uh, velcro straps unfortunately I do not have any of them so we're just gonna have to do with what we got and uh, use my fingers since I'm so used to using CA building airplanes and stuff alright so that's pretty much gonna have to let this dry All right, before we uh, continue on to the opposite side in the meantime I'm gonna go ahead and do this one real time all right so like I said I pull back oh I did both of them already in the back oh yeah I forgot <laughs> man I'm getting old talk about short time uh, short term memory I already glued this one all right so we're just gonna let this dry uh, both rear tires kind of pull that up here like that and just kind of let that dry completely before we go to the other side. Um, the reason for that is because there's a, there's a kind of bit of thin CA there. I don't want to flip it upside down and it drips over to the casing and then it can kind of flows over and it makes it look like crap. All right. So the um, front wheels, they look pretty good. What I'm going to do here is kind of pull and see if it's separating and if it starts separating we can add uh, a few drops of uh, thin CA once again in the crevice there in the area and basically you can go all the way around and just apply thin CA just to be in the safe side the whole point is to ensure that all the way around you have thin CA or you have your tire completely glued in this way you don't have a chance of your tire popping off the rim especially on the corners like if you're you're holding ass and take a sharp turn if your sidewalls are not completely glued down it's gonna tend to uh, separate from the rim it doesn't really matter really I guess it doesn't uh, because it still separates uh, in time um, even even the uh, one-fifth scale uh, casings and rims uh, those are beadlock and they still pop off the beadlock so you know <laughs> It, it is what it is. I mean, we're driving these vehicles hard. You know, the, the tires are spinning. You know, uh, uh, we're doing different terrain and stuff like that. So, but this one here is a street vehicle, right? So, uh, this one shouldn't be as bad compared to uh, the uh, off-road vehicles. Dirt and grime and everything getting all wedged up in the uh, in between the casing and the rim when you take a hard turn and stuff. So. Uh, as far as uh, street wheels, uh, they're, they're pretty good. They'll hold up. They'll hold up pretty well. All right. So 
other than that, uh, that's pretty much in a nutshell, really, uh, how we go about gluing the uh, tires onto a rim. All right, like I said, there's there's a a whole bunch of different ways people do it. Uh, you know. As long as uh, they get that rim, that casing glued onto the rim, it's fine with them. For me, I just do a little bit of an extra, you know, work by ensuring you get uh, a proper surface for the glue to adhere to. Uh, it doesn't have any grease or grime, uh, you know, in the area that you're gonna be gluing. That way, it gives it that much more of a chance to hold better and not separate on first run, all right? So, it, it is what it is. Cool. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, off camera, I'll go ahead and take care of the front. Uh, same procedure, we're just gonna pull back and basically put some CA in there and let it dry. All right, so the uh, whole tire gluing is done. We're just waiting for it to cure properly, to fully cure. Um, so I don't want to mess with it or touch it and stuff like that. All right, um, thin CA, you gotta work really fast with thin CA and because uh, it gets everywhere. So just be prepared if you're gonna use thin CA in the future. Uh, like I said, I'm always going to say it, it's best to use medium CA. Medium CA gives you a little more time to work with and uh, it, it still does the purpose. It still wicks in there also, uh, but at least it runs a little slower uh, than thin CA where thin CA, the minute you put a drop in there, it just goes. All right. so. Hopefully that helps again, uh, helps you out. Uh, hopefully that kind of gives a little bit of an insight on how uh, it gets done. Like I said, different people have different techniques. Uh, this is the same technique I've been using for the past 30 some years. Uh, it hasn't changed for me. So I don't think it's ever gonna change unless uh, they come up with a better method um, out there. All right, but uh, other than that, 30 years of doing this RC uh, hobby, you know, when it comes to planes, comes to helis, comes to gliders, you know, comes to cars, comes to boats. It don't really matter in this hobby. I do it all. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. Cool. Alright, hopefully that helps, brother. Shoot, shoot.